After all, in 36, the uh, prices were not quite as high as they are today. So, then, after we got our ten dollars, we grabbed our baggage, our cakes of salmon belly and uh, smoked fish, and went down there, and of course, I had no place to go. Uh, so I followed some friends into a bar of a good Swedish friend of mine. And we had a few drinks, and yak, yak, go. there was an awful lot of talk. Naturally, our ten dollars were gone in no time. I was a little careful and held on to mine, because I had to get all the way to Berkeley. And uh, I must have had a few drinks too many, because uh, I forgot to get my smoked salmon and salmon bellies and I never again found them. That's all right, I didn't mind that so much. So that was the summer of 36. We came home, and there was old man Wright, getting ready to go up to Tahoe, invited me to come along. So we went, went up to Tahoe. I had bought a sleeping bag from Ray Miguel, a good friend of mine in those days, and I had a few weeks of uh, enjoyment up at Tahoe. One day, I don't know whether I mentioned that before, where the old man right, he wanted to have a boat, but he didn't have the money, so he persuaded me to go and take a job with him. And we found a job digging a trench for a pipeline right behind the uh, tunnel on the Nevada side. And of course my hands being pretty soft from uh, working with dough. We were raw in no time, and after six or seven hours I just couldn't work anymore. So naturally we were paid off, but it was enough to uh, uh, rent a motorboat the next day, the next two, three days in fact. And we went fishing, never caught very much, until finally I showed old man right how to catch fish in a little stream by hand. That was the only fish we ever got into camp. But the women at least had to stop kidding us about our fishing expeditions. Then, well, there wasn't much else. Uh, Tahoe, is, I mean, it was an enjoyable place and the usual little excitement about uh, a snake or birds or fishing. And then finally, back we went to Berkeley, and I signed, re-registered again, getting ready for another year of study. I came back with, after everything was paid for, and I had a new suit, I had enough money, I had something like five or six hundred dollars left, enough to buy a season ticket in the opera. Oh, I had a good time that year, but my grades really suffered, too. Then, uh, well, that brings us up to the end of 36, and uh, nothing very interesting happened anymore. It was just plain work, study, bake in Wright's boarding house, bread during the week and pies during the week, and Sunday morning donuts. We got quite a reputation for the best feeding boarding house in Berkeley. We had up to 250 boarders. They were fed in three shifts. And we had 45 uh, students who worked uh, an hour cleaning vegetables. One hour was enough for one meal. And of course I got paid in cash besides free room and board. Great life in those days. And that's about all for 1936. I think I should add that in 1936, after we came back from Alaska, the seamen went out on strike again. I, uh, well, after the strike had started, I went over to the Union Hall and reported in for strike duty, hoping that I would get out of it because after all I was signed up in college and I didn't want to spend too much time on the picket line. 
They asked me a few questions. There was all a lot of excitement there. People were in a nasty mood because in '36, being out on strike really meant something. There was no uh, uh, relief, no unemployment insurance. Everybody who was out on strike just depended on his own savings. And so the seamen were in very nasty mood, generally. But anyway, I went over there and talked to them a little bit. And they didn't have any immediate job for me on the picket line. And so I used that as an excuse to never again show up for picket duty. Well, that was fine, except uh, 1937 came along and I went over there to uh, pay my dues, attend some of the meetings, when they finally stopped me and said, say, what did you do during the strike? Well, I ex tried to explain that I reported in and told me they don't have anything for me. So I just uh, went back east, east meaning Berkeley as far as they were concerned. And uh, as far as I was concerned, they thought I went back east as a mother city. Anyway, they had a little kind of a so-called uh, trial or investigation, but uh, I was lucky. They uh, didn't find me or anything. Uh, so uh, I was ready for the next job. As a result of the strike, the unions had gained quite a lot more control over conditions aboard ship. For one thing, uh, the sleeping quarters were greatly improved. The food was greatly improved. And uh, the considerable benefits were gained. Also, there was higher pay. Came May and the end of the semester, I started looking for another job in Alaska. And the same steward wanted to put me on again. In fact, he told me I have the job. But the union said, no, we tell you who is to go to Alaska. And uh, I didn't have enough pull with the union officials, so somebody else went to Alaska and I stayed here. So I took the, I need, naturally needed a job badly and uh, so I took the first boat out which was uh, a converted passenger liner, the steamship Maui of the Madsen steamship line. It was a beautiful boat in a way because it was big and the crew's quarters were uh, tops, in other words, they were what used to be the first class passenger quarters. The galley was big, equipped for uh, serving several hundred people, and we had only about 45 or so uh, men aboard that uh, ship. The Maui went back and forth between San Francisco and the various islands and she took over oil and brought back sugar and syrup and pineapples. That summer I made uh, two trips to the islands, to various islands out there and I really got to know whatever you could see within easy reach of the ports like Hilo, or naturally Honolulu, and then Maui. Oh, it was a beautiful trip in a way. Of course, I didn't make as much money as the previous year, but still, it was very good. Besides the uh, trips to Hawaii, I made one trip on a uh, California Hawaiian boat, the first modern motor ship had the uh, big diesel engines driving the ship and I got well acquainted with the chief engineer who uh, 
let me run all over the engine room and he explained whatever I asked him. Among other things, what really struck me as interesting, he showed me one time what he called the heart of the whole operation. I didn't know what he was talking about, but he took me to a little closet off in the corner of the engine room and said, now watch and see what you got in here. If everything else fails, this is where we start the whole ship. And he opened the closet, was a small room, and inside was an old Model T gasoline engine, a Ford Model T gasoline engine. And this engine was rigged up to operate an air compressor, and the air compressor in turn would then start the big diesels. So the heart of the most modern ship at that time was a Model T gasoline engine. Why they took a Model T? Well, any seaman at that time had been acquainted with the Model T's and could take a Model T apart and put it together again. It was very, very simple. Even I could do it. So that's why it was a Model T. So I made the three trips on the steamship, uh, the Californian. We went up to Seattle and hit just about every port in the Sound. On the 4th of July, I remember, we were docked in Tacoma. Uh, I didn't know just anything about the geography of that area, but there I happened to be looking east in the evening, and there was Mount Rainier, all afire. The sun just hit it, it was completely covered with snow, and the evening sun hit it and was just fiery red, a beautiful sight. I can never forget that 4th of July. <coughs> the summer of 37 wasn't very interesting. The three trips, sure they were fine, lazy. I came back with probably half as much money as I had the previous year. And now the junior year started in, and there I really uh, needed a little more money. After all, by that time I had a girlfriend, and uh, that required a little money too. So besides uh, the work in the boarding house, which of course I was always sure of, I took on a little upholstery work, and that helped. Then I really got in serious studying. Now, junior year, I had to study electrical engineering and physics and uh, whatnot. I liked it. I put in my time and enjoyed it. But there's not much more to report about uh, 1937. Uh, came the spring of uh, 38. And again, I had to start looking around, uh, first of all, worrying about uh, grades, passing all my courses. Uh, ever so often when uh, I'm in the board ship, I may, have, I may miss a final and end up with a E or a D or something like that. So I naturally had to mm. pick up the grade points. I somehow managed. Well, came May of 1938. And I went out looking for a job, and there was around the world boat, the uh, Tall Steamship uh, President Polk. Well, around the world, of course, that was for me. So I put in my name, and I was lucky and got it. At that time, as I mentioned, I had a girlfriend who lived in Berkeley. And she kind of hoped that I would spend a little more time there that summer. But, uh, well, around the world trip, there wasn't any girl that could hold me away from there. Well, we started out, and uh, the ship was an old one, a dirty one. And it just barely passed uh, the Union regulations as far as uh, uh, sleeping quarters for the crew went. And I really had to do all kind of finagling to get the oven to heat up so I could do any baking. But 
Looking back, it was just one of these problems.